Okay, now I've got a chart of some diets here. Uh, what I'm looking at is vitamin C and vitamin E in the diets. Now, only 7% of Americans get the bare minimum of vitamin E. No wonder incidence of Alzheimer's disease is raising so fast. 7%. That means in this auditorium, perhaps only a handful of people would be getting enough vitamin E and everyone else would be deficient. And that's the bare minimum of 15 milligrams or 22 and a half IUs per day. We really could use a bit more than that. So in the standard American diet, you don't even get enough vitamin C, and the vitamin E is seven, not even half of the minimum daily requirement. On the Atkins diet, well, it came up worse for vitamin C, and vitamin E was only five milligrams. That's a tiny amount. By the way, on the Atkins diet, when I analyzed it, the fiber was under one gram. Kind of makes you wonder how those people poop. <laughs> Really scary diet. Uh, the zone diet did pretty good for vitamin C because they're eating a lot of berries and a lot of greens. But the vitamin E wasn't high enough. Where do you get vitamin E? Nuts and seeds is where I get mine. Avocados and olives. That's a, those are the best sources of vitamin E. In the paleo diet, which is extremely popular, they did get enough vitamin C from berries and uh, fruits and vegetables. But the vitamin E, again, was too low. The Bulletproof Diet uh, <laughs> did get barely enough vitamin C, but again, low in vitamin E. South Beach Diet, same thing. Now, I have a transition vegetarian diet here. A vegetarian diet can be a healthy thing, or it can be an unhealthy thing. A vegetarian diet that consists of white flour, cheese, and eggs is not a very healthy diet. In fact, the saturated fats often at levels very similar to an American diet where people are eating meat. And they didn't get enough vitamin E or vitamin C because they weren't eating enough fruits and vegetables on this particular diet. The Mediterranean diet got enough vitamin C but not enough vitamin E. What they did get came from olive oil. The vegan whole food diet did a really good job of vitamin C and also vitamin E. Nice on both counts. Now there's some very low-fat diets out there, the McDougal diet, the Pritikin diet, the Ornish diet. There's quite a few people advocating a very low-fat diet. Unfortunately, vitamin E occurs in fatty foods. So it is impossible to get enough vitamin E on a 10% or lower fat diet. If you get down to 10% of calories, you cannot get enough vitamin E. It's just not possible, unless you got all your calories from vitamin E pills. Uh, the winner was the raw vegan diet, which got 423 milligrams of vitamin C. That's about the highest I've ever seen in any diet. And 45 milligrams of vitamin E, three times the daily minimum. An excellent idea. So when you analyze diets, you get a good idea. And again, the Diet Doctor software I have developed over many decades, it now covers uh, over 200,000 foods that you can select from. So you can find even the worst junk food or the, the best superfood in there. Our study came out in 2019 that looked at vitamin C not in the food, which is a little unreliable. People often overstate how many vitamins they get from their food and the healthy food, and they understate the unhealthy food. You know, the old story about the health food camp that said, you can come to our camp and lose five pounds a week eating the exact diet you eat at home. How did they do it? Well, when the people wrote their diet at home, they left out the Snickers bars and the cake and all the things that were giving them calories. They made them eat what they said they were eating at home. Because the dietary frequency questionnaires are not too reliable, I like studies like this that looked at plasma vitamin C levels. Now we know exactly how much vitamin C these people are really getting. Whether it came from supplements or food or both, vitamin C and plasma improve the performance on tasks, whether it's attention or focus, decision speed, um, how fast they could recall things, recognition. The dimension group was three times more likely to have low plasma vitamin C levels. So vitamin C is a crucial nutrient. The best way to get it, fruits and vegetables. Can you get enough with fruits and vegetables? Well, as has been pointed out, 
our fruits and vegetables have been hybridized over time. And over time, they become sweeter and less sour. Well, vitamin C is a very sour thing. It's uh, pH is three, like lemon juice. So the fruits and vegetables of today don't give us the vitamin C we may have once been able to eat in the wild. In fact, when they look at gorillas in the wild, who have similar requirements to us in vitamin C, they're also one of the very few animals that don't make their own vitamin C in their liver. They get 1,200 milligrams per day from their food, whereas the best we can do is eat, get 400 milligrams per day from the hybridized food that we're eating. So I consider 1,200 milligrams kind of a basic lower level for vitamin C each day. When you look at the animals that do make vitamin C in their liver, it's a four-step enzymatic process made from glucose, but we're lacking one of those enzymes. There's only a few animals on the planet that can't make their own vitamin C. And these are animals that, or people, that evolutionarily had access to great amounts of vitamin C. If you look at different animals, adjust them to a basis of 150 pounds, the least amount of vitamin C any animal makes would be 2,000 2, milligrams per day, and the most vitamin C that animals make would be 20,000 milligrams per day. So on that basis, it might not be a bad idea if we got at least 1,200 milligrams per day. This study, it looked at the risk of Alzheimer's disease they looked at supplements in this case, vitamin C and E supplements, and they reduced the risk of Alzheimer's disease by 40%. That's a nice reduction in risk. The, how did they do it? They reduced the neuronal damage and brain cell death caused by oxidative stress, by the damage from free radicals. However, I must caution you, and I'll explain later, that the, what's called vitamin E in vitamin pills is not really vitamin E. So you must be very cautious in choosing your vitamin E. Having written a college textbook on vitamins and minerals from McGraw-Hill, I can say with certainty that the vitamin E that you're getting in almost every supplement is greatly inferior and not at all truly vitamin E. Now another antioxidant, coenzyme Q10, reduces brain damage from oxidation, perfect. We don't want our brains to shrink down to half, like an Alzheimer's person. We want to keep them full, fluffy. The coenzyme Q10 was found to improve brain function in elderly people. It does this by improving the production of energy in the little energy factories in the brain called mitochondria. And it also reduces oxidative stress. But remember, coenzyme Q10 is essential for producing aerobic energy. You cannot make it without coenzyme Q10, whether you make it yourself or you get it externally. Now, by the way, statin drugs reduce, on average, your production of coenzyme Q10 by 40%. So if you are taking statin drugs, how many people in this room are proud to say they are not taking statin drugs? Could I have a show of hands? Fantastic. That's about half the audience, and that's, uh, that's, that's good. Uh, it is, after all, the best-selling drug in the world. The, uh, yeah, statin drugs technically are hydroxyglutaryl coenzyme A reductase inhibitors that inhibit farnesyl and mevalonate, which are involved in the production of both cholesterol and coenzyme Q10. So it blocks both of them. Pardon my big words. I love big words. Now, we did supply coenzyme Q10. As I go on with the talk, you'll see a yellow line on the slide that tells you what we actually used in the trial, so you can keep track of it. And my book there, Nutrients for Memory, which we have a few outside, and they're available on my website. Uh, I do, by the way, have a downloadable version for under $10. It's the full book, if you want to read it on a tablet or computer or even a cell phone, if you have very good eyesight. Supplementary coenzyme Q10 reduce the production of amyloid plaques in the brain. That's just what we want. And it stimulates mitochondrial superoxide dismutase, which I mentioned about protects the brain from cell death. When the mitochondria, the membrane gets damaged, it becomes permeable and apoptosis or programmed cell death occurs. And this is very common in Alzheimer's brains. Let's not have it common in ours. 
in the many studies done on coenzyme Q10, there have not been problems with safety or tolerability by people. Very rare to have anyone react unfavorable to this very natural thing that, in our bodies.